so I've been with the company 17 years. I've seen lots and lots of improvements to SolidWorks. And what I've found is this year, I'm genuinely really excited to show you some of the stuff that we've got. I think that you're gonna see some of these things and you're gonna think to yourself, wow, this is gonna be really cool. So what I wanna start off with is introducing you to the model that most of my presentation today is focused on. As a scientist, I have to build the puzzle pieces that I need to build this history of the universe. That Canada Friends telescope is multifunctional. We need to think about solutions to improve the instrument, to make things work. One of the most impressive discoveries that we made here is an object that came through the solar system and we were able to catch it. So we're trying to predict the evolution of the universe for the future. So pretty cool stuff. Canada, France, Hawaii telescope company. Okay, some absolutely amazing things here. This is answering questions that we don't, well, giving answers to questions we don't have yet. I think it's pretty amazing. This is the reason why we fund research, okay? So, a little background on these guys. A little Google map action for everybody on the, on the live stream. This um, telescope is mounted at 14,000 feet above sea level on a dormant volcano in Hawaii on the Big Island, okay? So basically commissioned in the 70s, so back in the days when steel was cheap, um, it was very beefy, which is great because what they did was they took all those blueprints from the 70s and they made a digital twin of it inside of SOLIDWORKS. And once they made that digital twin, they sent it off to some really smart engineers and they verified that the new design they're going to do is going to fit underneath the original design. These are some of the images that this 3.6 meter telescope has delivered thus far. So you can see there at the bottom, that is the original facade, and that's the new 10 meter telescope that they're going to be accomplishing with this. So every version of SOLIDWORKS, every new release, is focused on four pillars, basically. We've got performance, attention to detail, the design ecosystem, so everything that plugs into SOLIDWORKS, and innovations that are brought to the market that you may have not seen or you didn't expect. So first we're gonna focus on performance. This is something near and dear to my heart. So with, with my coworkers, Adrian Fanjoy, Josh Altergott, Brian Pollock, we're in the process of revisiting our Achieving Extreme Performance and SOLIDWORKS presentation that we've done since 2012. Um, in my office, I currently have two high-end box workstations that I'm gonna be testing. I have a box of video cards from NVIDIA, and we're gonna be seeing how performance is affected with SOLIDWORKS 2018 and 2019, and some of the things you're gonna be seeing. I think you'll be impressed. What we did in 2019 is re-architected the way that video is being calculated inside of SOLIDWORKS, okay? Now, what's amazing to this is I don't have to go out and buy a brand new $5,000 video card to make this work, okay? Um, Brian Zayas, if you're in the room, hey, hey Brian, how you doing? <laughs> awesome. He shared some great data with me, and he kind of spitballed on the number. I think it's much higher, but he said out of the, what, 100 million reports that you get at SOLIDWORKS, you got a report of how many video cards are being used and what video cards they are. In the top 10, eight out of the top 10 are gonna be leveraging this new performance that we're gonna get, okay? You don't have to use large assembly mode, okay? Which is great. 
we came up with large assembly mode. And what did it do for us? It turned off shaded with edges. It, tur it, hide it hid everything. It turned the image quality down a little bit so things would pan, rotate, and zoom faster. With 2019, you don't have to do that. This is a file loaded up in 2018. And if we look at it, it's actually loaded in large assembly mode. Okay? So you can see there, as I go in and go out, things are disappearing. They turn a little blocky. They pop back in. Okay? So pan, rotate, zooms are a little laggy. But what happens when I turn off large assembly mode with this? All of a sudden, I get frame drops. You ever see it? You click down on it and you drag, and all of a sudden it takes a second, and then it starts moving. Those are drop frames. That's something we don't want. This is 2019 SOLIDWORKS, fully resolved, no large assembly mode. What we're doing is a new performance pipeline with NVIDIA where we are taking the computations for the model geometry and offloading it completely to the CPU. That means models that you would get three, four frames per second now give you 30, 40, 50 frames per second. This, this file on my machine, I can go in and see how many frames I get. In 2019, with that performance indicator turned off, I get three frames per second. The same as I do in 2018, because the data set was in 2018. When I turn that back on, I get 33 frames per second on my machine. That's not this Velociraptor of a machine that Box just delivered to me. It's on my old Velociraptor box that has a M3000. Okay. So what this means for you, if you have a Quadro K card, which is Kepler, a Maxwell card, which is an M card, a P card, which you're fortunate you just bought a new machine, or if you're one of those people that are cutting edge and you have a Volta card, you're going to be taking advantage of this. So eight out of the top 10, we're using Kepler. So if you have a video card that is more, more than eight years old, you might be out of luck, but a Kepler card is eight years old. You'll be able to use this performance path. It's pretty impressive. Now the great thing about this is, this leveraging of this new GPU capabilities is not just leveraged inside of SOLIDWORKS. It's also leveraged inside of eDrawings. You're gonna see that performance indicator. Large design review. We always want to focus on performance, delivering things that are, well, appealing to all of us when we come to working with our models. And the large design review came out, and I was impressed because it allowed me to get insanely large data sets up on screen. I could review them in a meeting with somebody, but it didn't give me absolutely everything I needed. So let's look at some of the new things here. I'm going to open this up in large design review. And this is actually the base of that assembly. Now, where this comes in handy is machines that aren't quite as new as my, my boss, or I call him beast mode, laptop. We can pan, rotate, zoom very quickly, cut section views. We can measure any components. Did I hear a question? OK, we'll get, we'll get to it here in a second. If you have components, you can hide those components. Okay. Things that you previously couldn't do is edit the assembly. Now we're going to go into an edit assembly mode, allowing me to create new components, delete components, manipulate the assembly hierarchy, add new components in and mate them. Okay. So when I go into edit assembly mode in large design review, I have my planes available. I can turn on sketches. I can grab components like this right here, and I can delete those. I can also insert new components that have not been in that assembly, and it still stays in large design review, which I appreciate. So you can see here, mating, that wasn't available in large design review. It is now. Okay. So you can see there, if you set up your components with magnetic mates, it now leverages the magnetic mate snapping, which is pretty incredible. If you haven't done that before, go into SOLIDWORKS, go in the command search, type in asset publisher. You'll get some amazing things. Okay? 
Switching configurations, you can also switch configurations while in des large design review, which is pretty nice. And as always in assemblies, if you've hidden something, you can use the very familiar show hidden components, return those, and you've got your design back. The great part about this is, at the end of the day, when you save this assembly, and someone opens it up fully resolved, light, lightweight or resolved or large assembly mode, you're still going to be sure that it's going to be exactly what I did in large design review. So like I said, you can see this. These are some things that are near and dear to my heart. Assemblies. Anyone here build assemblies? Nope, nobody? Okay, I'll, I'll skip that slide. So, let's just go ahead and pop into here. So, when we build assemblies, mates, we can build up some mates pretty quickly. Okay? Sometimes before we know it, we have 100, 200 mates. Well, one of the things we can do now, we can go into mate group and say mate by status. Absolutely love this. So we can see all the mates that are solved, and it groups them nice and neatly together. Then we can see any mates that truly have errors that are missing references. We go ahead and select that new mate reference, and SOLIDWORKS is nice enough to go ahead and fix those on any other mates that had that missing reference. That's something that was added in SOLIDWORKS 2017. You can see here's a mate that was one for a suppressed component, so we just turn that off. A, a mate that's actually there because it's turned off because the component never loaded in the assembly, so we'll just remove that one. And the last one here is inactive fixed. Well, means the first component in the assembly, someone mated it to the front right top planes, and then after the fact, they fixed it. So at that point, it does negate those and suppress those for you. So pretty nice. Another thing here, does anyone here do concentric mates? I do lots of concentric mates. Anybody use toolbox? I use it a lot. I have lots of toolbox fasteners. And one of the things that drives me bonkers is the fact that you still have negative signs next to toolbox components because the concentric mate is still being able to pivot. Now with 2019, you can right click on the folder and say lock all concentric mates. There's also a system option now under toolbox that allows you to say every time I insert a concentric mate on a toolbox fastener, lock it automatically. What do you guys think? Valuable? I think so. Explode views. I do lots of documentation at computer aided technology and when I do some side work. No one heard I do side work. Okay. But going through and doing an audit of an explode view, I'd have to right click, say edit. Here, I get a rollback bar for the explode view. That's pretty sweet. And if I look at it step by step, I can see that something's out of order. And it looks like those bolts happened before I took off the end cap. So if I right click, I can go in and, well, I can either drag and drop it and reorder it right then and there without even editing it. Or I can drag down and look and see, well, I miss some, miss some washers being spaced out. So if I edit that feature, you can see there that when I edit the feature, the rollback bar is exactly where I was at in the feature manager design tree. What do you guys think? Pretty cool? It's a great way to do edits and changes. I, I can't stress enough how thankful I am for the guy sitting in this front row right here, going back to development and asking them to make the software do what we want. And that was one of those things. So I'm pretty impressed and very thankful. You can also suppress explode states. So now if you just want to focus on certain avenues or you want a drawing view to look a little different, you can easily right click and then suppress that so you're focused on just the components you need exploded. What do you guys think? Pretty cool? This one I love. For years, I've been telling people, don't go save as ABI. Because if you've ever gotten an ABI file from somebody and it says failed to load, couldn't load Kodak, that drives me bonkers. That's because the compression decompression algorithm for that video was not installed on your computer. Now with 2019, we can go in and save a video and save it as industry standards, MKV, MP4, MOV, 
um, Flash. So there's quite a few options that we have available to you. So lock rotation, group mates, explode view enhancements where we can actually grab a rollback bar and just kind of walk through it and do an audit of the explode view. This was the very first thing I did when I got beta of 2019. I, I saw this at SOLIDWORKS World and I thought this was the greatest thing since sliced bread, I will tell you. Being able to go through and adjust how the D feature tool is done makes this so much more useful and so much easier to convey to people without giving up your intellectual property. I absolutely love this. So if we go over to the D feature command, you're going to get a litany of new options. So now we have just standard D feature and we have silhouette. Silhouette gives us quite a bit more. So we come in, we pick some components that we don't want their shape to change because they're very crucial to mounting, placing, that sort of thing. And we come in, we give it a no change option. Okay. This, if I only had this option right here, I would be happy, the side by side as I pick groups. So here, as I go through, I'm going to pick all identical components in one shot with a right mouse button click. That's in every command aside of SOLIDWORKS now in 2019. Absolutely love it. So here, we're going to go through, we're going to pick the reel. We actually pick the motor itself. That is a surface. So that gives us some nice options there. And you can see, as we picked those, we said fit a cylinder to all those components we just picked. Now this next one, we're going to go through, grab the lock washers, we're going to grab the nuts, we're going to grab the hopper on the motor for the guard, and we're going to say fit a polygon to that, just a polygon straight um, extrusion. Here, we've got this motor, it's pretty complex, but we want to see what it looks like from the top and the right. We can go through and say, give me a projection from multiple planes it will create a sketch from multiple planes, project, find the intersection, and that will be your de-featured model. What do you think? This allows me to do a lot more with that de-feature tool than I was previously. And gives me much more control, which I've always wanted with this tool. At the end of the day, I'm able to save that out and link it back to the original so every one of the bodies is dynamically linked back to the original. So you can see, pretty massive, okay? A lot of changes there, very nice, okay? And the associated link back to the original model. So performance, there's a lot there, okay? So being able to offload the display of your models to the video card with Kepler, Maxwell, Pascal, Volta, and Turing is the new one, Brian? Okay, Turing. And being able to take some assemblies that you just want to reduce their file size and do a D feature with the silhouette command. These are all things that SOLIDWORKS is focused on for 2019 for you guys. Attention to detail. It's the next area. Structure systems. This is an amazing little tool here. Especially when looking at this sort of weldment I can only imagine how many features it would take to do this. Brian, did, did they actually see how many features it would take to do this? My, my guesstimate is probably 30 to 40 features just to get started. Okay. So if we look at this, it's actually the frame for the 10 millimeter telescope. So it's what's holding it. So this thing needs to be really beefy. So we're going to look at this. And we're going to look at see what a structure system actually means. Many times when we do weldments, we do a combination of 2D and 3D sketches. Here we don't have to. We'll do something a little bit more simplified. We'll do some surfaces. We'll do some 2D sketches and some planes. Execute the structure system, and I go through and tell it what I want my primary beams to be. With a simple box selection, I'm able to go through and, well, select a whole bunch. And the whole bunch equals 36 beams, all created in one shot. Okay? 
Now, I don't have the beans picked the size I want, so I'm going to do a square tube, and I'm going to do a 10 inch by 10 inch square tube for everything. Go ahead and hit OK. And while I'm still in the structural system, all I have to do is select the beans and it allows me to edit them right then and there. I don't have to hit a button. Making life so much easier. These uprights are going to be 7 inch tubes, actually 10 inch tubes. So I'm going to switch that over. Just box selecting around the sketch and I'm able to create those, those structural stiffening beams. Okay. Now, sometimes we have to create secondary members between our primary members. So we're going to select a plane at the top and the bottom, and then we're going to chain around each one of them, and it's going to put a beam at the intersection of the plane using the intersection of each one of the selected beams. Now, as soon as we exit out the system, is going to present to us the corner treatment tool, allowing us to edit every one of the corners in order that we want. Okay? So if we look at the first corner here, and I'm going to stand here by the screen for a second because I'm getting blind. So I want the horizontals trimmed to each other, and I'd like the vertical to be trimmed after the fact. So coming in, selecting that, it trims that one flat to the surface. The other ones are being coped. So in this situation, by picking that intersection, it automatically picked the vertical as a coping tool, and the other beams are coped to it. If we look at the top one, same idea. We want the, the horizontal beams to be mitering to each other, and then we're going to transfer the vertical beam to, well, the trim flat area. Okay? So pretty straightforward. A little bit of revolve going on here. We're going to do a pattern of each one of those stiffening beams, those seven inch tubes. And we've got the beginning of that structure. I can only imagine how long this would take by going in and creating 3D sketches and, well, weldment structures inside of solvers. These are the types of things in 2019 that are going to make our life easier for creating, well, structural beams and major large structures. I think you're going to like this. So probably by far the ability to go in and create them all very quickly and then just select the ones that you want and edit them on the fly without even hitting a command. It's pretty amazing. A couple part delighters here. So in this situation, another weldment. Weldments come in very handy for us, especially in a multi-potty part. But if we wanted to check and see if inter things interfered, yes, the sound that you're hearing in the background for the people that are here, that is a giant rainstorm hitting Chicago. It'll be done in like two minutes, then we'll have another one. So you know how it is. So here, without taking that multi-body part and saving it as an assembly, I can do interference detection in the part. That comes in so handy. The workaround that I'd have to do in the past other than save it out as an assembly, would be going in and using the merge command inside the multi-body folder and finding what the commons were between all parts if I don't want to have to create an assembly. Well, we don't have to do that anymore. Life's a little bit easier. Tab and slot. So I got the, the privilege of speaking to some of the developers in the last year. And they get some of the coolest jobs at SOLIDWORKS for the mere fact that a third of their year is going out and visiting you guys. I know some of the people in the room have talked to these guys in the last year. And one of the things they found over the last few years when it came to sheet metal was people were spending lots of money on fixturing that sheet metal, doing magnets, doing custom fixturing, to hold the, the pieces of metal together so they could weld them. And what we found was even if they were doing what we were doing here with a tab and slot, they were doing it after the fact in the flat pattern. Okay? So a couple things that we did with tab and slot is we gave the ability to control if it's equal offset all the way around. We gave you corner treatments. In SOLIDWORKS 2018, it gave you sharp corners. In 2018, you get ob round, you get diamond, my favorite. 
it says corner, uh, circular corners. I call it Mickey Mouse ears. At least that's what my daughter called it when she saw me do the demo the first time. So hopefully Disney won't send me a cease and desist for calling those Mickey Mouse ears. Um, Brian, I'm, I apologize. You might get a cease and desist wonder. Another one was the fact that every time we did a tab and slot inside of sheet metal, it would always go through. Now we can say go to a material depth based upon the aspect ratio of the material thickness, which is very beneficial. Another one here, in 2018 when we did the tab and slot, each one of the groups that we create for the tab and slot had their own unique numbers. If they're all the same, now you can hit a check mark and say link them all together. So that one's pretty nice. This is where some of that meshing that we were talking about comes into play again. Okay? Some major performance increases with the mesh on the video card. But when they started playing with meshes, they said, you know, we can do a lot of stuff with meshes in SOLIDWORKS. Let's see what we can do. These all came out of multiple projects from multiple years. So we have a handle. And many times when you're doing a handle like this, well, Ed Eaton, one of the best industrial designers I know inside of SOLIDWORKS is sitting in the front row over here. If you've never seen Ed Eaton stuff, go to demontegroup.com. Big plug for you. There's 400 people on the live stream. So, but when Ed talks about this, there's lots of ways of creating designs. Okay? You can do it where you make it out of clay, right? And you have to have somebody scan that. You bring it in. Well, once you bring it in, what do you do with it? It's just a mesh model. Well, in 2019, you don't have to worry about that. We now can do pseudo BREP mapping with meshes. But one of my favorite tools is this new slicing tool in 2019. What it allows you to do is pick a plane for direction, give it a spacing, and it automatically creates an individual plane, an individual sketch for each slice, and allow you to dynamically change what that slice is, allowing you to take that mesh model and build a SOLIDWORKS feature-based model off of that mesh. I think that's pretty amazing. I see some smiles in the room, and I see some smiles on the webcast. Thank you very much for the smiles. So, Ed, you're going to like this one. You're going to really like this one, and I bet you you've even seen it. I'm going to split this into multiple faces because it created it as a single face. Okay? Now, one of the problems here is I need that logo on the side of the model. That logo has multiple closed contours. I'm going to drag the closed contour onto the model, and then I'm going to execute a projected curve command. For those of you who have ever done the projected curve command would know in 2018, this would say you can't do that. There are multiple open and closed contours in this sketch. It's allowing me to do it. It does not have to be closed. It can be open. And it can also be bidirectional. So what we achieved there in one command was what we'd have to do in four commands in 2018. And if it has more than two or more than one, that would be five or six. This one's kind of a nice one. If you ever get imported models and they've got holes in them, we now have an option to delete holes. It just, it's kind of a little macro behind the scenes. And what it does for me, I pick one edge of the hole. And I can pick multiple holes. And it will delete them all in one shot, giving me a watertight model. In this situation, I've got my wire going through, and I see an interference detection. It's kind of what I expected. I expected an interference when I saw that, because something looked weird at that interface. New in SOLIDWORKS 2019, I can come in and negate some of that by putting a chamfer on that edge. But you can see the chamfer goes on the whole edge. Well, not anymore. I can do a partial chamfer. It does not have to be symmetric either. It could be asymmetrical, so I can have a chamfer going in either direction. It can also be fillets. So a partial fillet, a partial chamfer. What do you guys think about that one? I like that one. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> I, I, I had 20 bucks. So in this situation, we've got the grip. This grip has some really nice gnarling features on it or some texturing. Okay? But in this situation, I want it to be something different. Previously, I'd have to create those features. But here, I'm using the new pseudo mesh capabilities inside of SOLIDWORKS 2019 
to be able to project a texture map onto the surface. Once I project that texture map onto the surface as a decal, I can then execute the command to allow me to displace the surface with said texture map. The black areas of the model, I mean th that texture map, are saying flush. The white areas are being either raised or sucked into the surface. So what you're doing is you're saying what the displacement is going to be and how refined that mesh is going to be. So at the end of the day, you can do very quick models of this, print it out on a 3D printer, and then test it to see if it's exactly what you want. Is it worth the time to invest and build all those features on that? Or can I try that very quickly with just adding a texture map to it? There's some great blogs on the SOLIDWORKS blog on how to create these if you want to create your own. I really like this. What do you guys think? Pretty cool stuff? Hey, I like claps. Those are nice. Once again, Bob McGoy, five stars. Okay, not Tony Busta. So, partial fillet, partial chamfers. Delete holes and surfaces. Like I said, this can be open or closed contours, as many as you want, and it can be bi-directional on multiple faces. So in this situation, like I said, it would have been one sketch, four features. In this situation, it's one sketch and one command. Nice way of saving feature tree and rebuild times. Topology study. And for those of you here, you now heard that the, the rain has subsided, so we, we stopped hearing the sand blasting outside. So in 2019, we enhanced topology studies quite a bit. 2018, we brought this out. It allows you to test based upon certain criteria for stiffness and your loads for your model to see what organic shape can achieve the same thing and lighten the load. So you can see this is actually one of the wheels used for focusing the camera. And you can see that yellow piece is the one we're going to work on. So you can see we've got some loads that we've got to go there, we've got a guard. Those are crucial areas we ask to keep. If we go in and we look at this, we can say, I want to now, in 2018, Look at it for frequency. Nothing drives me bonkers more than getting on a lawnmower and being shaken like crazy. It's because something in the, that lawnmower is vibrating at the wrong frequency. Or if you've seen those videos of a bridge shaking violently and swaying back and forth, it's because it's hit its natural frequency. So new in 2019, we have the ability to test this for frequencies we give it frequencies that we want to stay out of, and it will readjust the design to stay out of those frequency ranges as well. We can also give it a factor of safety to stay within if we want as well. So these are all nice things. The other thing that is showing here on screen right now is the fact that once we get done with this, we can say, save it back into the model as a body so we can model around it and it will smooth it out so it's even more easy to digest and work with. So remember, we did the slice command. You can then go back and take this mesh and slice it and start building your model off of. What do you guys think? Just a couple things we're doing in simulation. In November timeframe, we're going we're gonna to do some presentations that focus on simulation, PDM. We're going to come back and we're going to do some more of this. But today we're just focusing on the highlights. We're focusing on what we're doing inside of SOLIDWORKS. So let's go ahead and step forward here. User experience. These are some of my favorites. These are things when I first saw them, I was like, this, this is stuff that are coming directly from you, the end users. So now that we come in and we start SOLIDWORKS up, you get the recently used documents. Okay. The recently used documents can now, by default, is set at 50. We can go as high as 100, 100 recently used documents. We also put in filters to filter just for parts, assemblies, drawings, and top level assemblies. On top of that, we gave the ability to filter based upon file names. So I could come in there, and if I want to work on the camera, I start typing the word camera, it'll look at that 100 list of files 
and will filter out camera for me. Really nice, okay? The other thing here, if we look at the dynamic references for the parent-child relationship, at the intersection point, we can now edit and lock the references individually on the fly. I think this is gonna come in really handy, okay? Another thing that we did is we reworked the external references command. A lot of you are gonna love this. Visually, you're gonna see the icons, you're gonna see the names of the features, you're gonna be able to click on those external references and it's gonna dynamically highlight in the assembly, in the viewport, what those things are related to. And we're gonna be able to edit those on the fly. This allows me to digest and you to digest those external references much easier. You can also isolate those components just with a button click and look at them and see what's going on. So in this situation, I can go in and there's a circular reference. I wanna break that circular reference from the assembly and what it'll do by breaking it, it will remove that definition out of the feature. I can then go back into the feature and pick my own circular reference right there on the fly. These are all things that people have been asking for for several years and hopefully we delivered those things to you. Definitely, when you get back to the office, for those of you who do not know, SP0 hit yesterday, okay? So SOWERS 2019 SP0 is out and available for download, okay? So another thing here, the dimension tool. Absolutely love the dimension tool. And when I say dimension, I mean the measurement tool in the evaluate tab. I like having this thing up, but I can't have it up all the time. There's certain things that it won't let me have it up all the time. Now, in 2019, it doesn't matter if I'm editing a dimension, if I'm editing a feature, if I'm in another command, that, that measurement tool from the evaluate toolbar is available to me at any time. I can use it, okay? Which gives me that flexibility. So, like I said, recently saved documents. It defaults to 50. You can set that up to 100 if you want to in the system option. External references, like I said, you can audit them, you can, you can isolate them right there on the fly while viewing in the assembly. The measurement tool off that evaluate toolbar is live in all commands, okay? So just things that make your everyday workflow much better. Drawings. There's a couple things in here when, when it came out, it's like, why would I use that? And then someone showed me, and I was like, oh, okay. So let's talk about this. The first one was a broken out, it was not broken out section, it's a removed section. So a great example of this, an, if you metal, if you did a metal hook, like a big curved hook, and you want to see the cross sections running through that hook, you can pick the edges on both sides and it will cut a section and the, the projected section will be perpendicular to the line. And you just drag and drop and drop those in, okay? Another thing on drawings that's very important is making sure that tolerancing for machining purposes is conveyed to the guys in the shop floor. So here I can go in and I can add tolerance modifiers. So I can say if something's an, an, um, a lower limit, I can say if something's a general tolerance information, and it just gives me the ability to convey that information to the shop floor that much better. So, we've always had support for whole tables for quite a long time, but we added some stuff in here I think you'll like. So one of those is the ability to say, where are the, the locations being brought from? And you can say, reduce the tool path so find out what the shortest path for each one of the holes is and list them in order of that. You can also do a radial fan out from a zero point and it will measure each one of them from that radial fan out point. You can go to each individual tag and modify the tag's prefix or suffix manually, okay? You can also go in the table, right click on any one of the tags and edit it from there as well. So you don't have to do it from the property manager on the right hand side, on the left hand side of the user interface. So these are all things that make life a little bit easier. 
So you can see there, sometimes we have drawing views that we don't want to rebuild every time. Mold designs are something that take a lot of time to rebuild drawing views. And sometimes we don't want them to rebuild just by opening them. We can now defer drawing build re regeneration whenever we want to. We, s we selected a couple drawing views there. They've got some, huh, there's that rainstorm I just told you about. It's coming back. Some of the views, maybe hard to see on the screen, have an orange halo around them. That orange halo indicates to me that I deferred the regeneration until I select them and say regenerate. That allows me to save my time for when I'm really ready to do that. Bills of materials. This one, when I saw this in the What's New, I wanted to go over to somebody and kick them in the shin. And the reason for that is I really needed this a month earlier to work with a customer. And what it is, when I save a bill of material out, in the bill of material, I can always hover over the components and it shows me a thumbnail of it. Now, in SOLIDWORKS 2019, when I export a bill of materials out as an Excel document, I can have a thumbnail of each one of the parts in the assembly. I love that. I don't know how many people I've talked to, they say, I have to do that manually. And I have to do that because order entry requires it because they don't know what my part number is. Nope, not me. Okay. Somebody rang. So drawings, removed section. Took me a minute to figure out what removed section was, but it's very cool. In the fact that all I have to do is pick two sides of the model and just drag along that, that projection, and I've got that nice cutout section there. Renaming and renumbering holes on the fly in the property manager or from the table. Okay. Um, delaying the updates. We've talked about that. So, attention to detail. I think we've done quite a bit thus far. And I'm about 45 minutes in. We're doing pretty good. So, the design ecosystem. What does that mean to me? What does that mean to you? Okay. Um, a wise man that I used to work with, he called SOLIDWORKS a 3D platform. And I still call it a 3D platform today because once you have a 3D model, there's lots of things that you can do with that model once you've got it. So one of those is design communication with somebody outside of the company. Some absolutely amazing things that we're doing here inside of eDrawings. Okay? So right off the bat, before I even get to these enhancements, would anybody be able to like to take an eDrawing and mark up, move, and measure at any given time? 2019, you can. All the functionality for markup, move, and measure is inside of eDrawings Professional in 2019. And in, I believe, eDrawings, was it 2018, Service Pack 3, all those features are now in core. The reason for that is we added more functionality in Professional. You got a, you got a set of waterfall features here. Okay. So here, I'm able to go into eDrawings. And we'll go into the file types, and we've added new file types, which are pretty nice. We've added support for Parasolid, Solid Edge, ProE, um, JT, NX files, STEP files, STLs. There's a lot more files that we can open up inside of eDrawings, which also allow us to leverage that downstream inside of PDM. If you're opening a SOLIDWORKS model directly inside of eDrawings, you can now switch configurations where before you'd have to publish that file from SOLIDWORKS and say what configurations you were going to publish. By opening the native file, I can then switch configurations, which is really nice. There is one little caveat to that. Inside of SOLIDWORKS, there is a right click on the configuration. You have to say mark for save. By doing that, you can access that inside of eDrawings. New in 2019, we have the ability to save the e-drawing as an HTML. You think to yourself, Bob, we were able to do that for a long time, since like 2002. Yeah, you could. But what is driving it behind the scenes is what's unique. 
it is no longer using eDrawing's ActiveX control. It is using HTML, 3D XML. So that means I can view this on my iPad, I can view it on my phone, I can view it on any device. And you'll see some of this type of technology filtering into some of the other tools that SOLIDWORKS offers in the future. Okay? The other thing that we talked about earlier was performance on the video cards. That also scales into e-drawings. So the ability to pan rotate zoom, get larger data sets inside of e-drawings and have smooth, responsive performance is something that you're going to achieve now with SOLIDWORKS in e-drawings 2019. What do you think? Pretty cool? I think so. So you've got 19 on the right, you've got 18 on the left. You can see there is no degradation in pan, rotate, and zoom. Same assembly we had open earlier. So, new file support, configuration support. Save as 3D XML. Actually, not 3D XML, 3D HTML. And like I said, that display, that video, that model is actually being offloaded to the GPU of your Kepler, your Maxwell, your Pascal cards. Treehouse. Some nice things in Treehouse. Okay? I'm only going to touch on a few things here, but I think you'll like some of this stuff. For going through structural analysis, and I'm not talking about FEA, I'm talking about analyzing the structure of how you're building your assembly before you do your projects or as you're doing your projects in a design review, Treehouse is great. But sometimes there's so many components on the screen, well, you have to minimize how much space those things are taking up. So now we can tell it to not show the icons for the component previews inside of Treehouse. Another thing that we can do is if you're not the engineer, you may not understand what number XYZ345 means or your part number. You can now go through any custom property that is inside of that SOLIDWORKS model and display that as the name instead of the part number. It's a great way to visualize that in a meeting. Okay? Now, adding parts to that structure is just as easy as dragging and dropping onto the assembly. If you notice here, We've got a property manager that looks exactly like you see inside of SOLIDWORKS. Now with Treehouse 2019, you can go through and edit any properties inside of the SOLIDWORKS model without even opening it. I like this one. If you have the intern, we all know who the intern is. The intern, you can have them sit down and just fill up those custom properties without even opening SOLIDWORKS. And remember I was talking about the bill of materials with the thumbnails. If we're in Treehouse, we can export the whole structure out to an Excel file and all the thumbnails go across as well. So some consistency, some new functionality. These are all things that are going to make us more productive and make us look like heroes in the office. Okay? Sours PDM. Okay? I am not going to go too in depth with this. There is so much in Sours PDM 2019 with SOLIDWORKS PDM and SOLIDWORKS Manage that I could probably take an hour, two hours just on that. I'm going to hit the highlights. Because they have full support for e-drawings as their preview, you are now going to be able to go in and switch configurations right there on the fly. Okay. One of my favorites is when I start a project and I log into the system, there's always variables in the data card that I have to always type in and they're the same doggone thing. Now you can have default search values and default data card options per login. So that's really nice. When you automate the process of creating DWGs of sheet metal components, you can automate the process of creating a sheet metal flat pattern outside of SOLIDWORKS PDM, which is really nice. Okay. In the Contains tab, in the Build Materials tab, when you right mouse button clicked, it was very limited, it was truncated. You only had like, I think maybe 10 or 12 features. 
Now, if you right click in the Contains tab in the Build Materials, you have the full right mouse button click that you would in any other menu structure in Windows Explorer. You just get the extra stuff from PDM. Full integration into SOLIDWORKS Inspection. So inside of SOLIDWORKS Inspection, you're going to get a PDM tab so you can check in, check out, do the latest and greatest for your project. The other thing there with SOLIDWORKS Inspection is you can cut and paste characteristics or custom properties from your project file directly onto the data card inside of PDM through Without even opening up PDM, you can access the data card inside of SOLIDWORKS Inspection. SOLIDWORKS Composer also got its own PDM tab, allowing you to easily access the data and have the latest and greatest, have the right file at the right time. SOLIDWORKS MBD. A couple years ago, I gave a presentation at SOLIDWORKS World called Becoming a Model-Based Enterprise. Has anyone heard of MBE? Well, one of the things that we were talking about then, and I also talk about it quite a bit with my friend Paul Adams at Dassault, um, is when you have a problem at your company with the design or manufacturing process, where do you go? Do you go to the drawing or do you go to the 3D model? If you're going to the 3D model, you're already on the track to becoming a model-based enterprise. You should really be thinking about how can I leverage that 3D model more? One of those ways is SOLIDWORKS MBD. Okay? That sets you on the path to becoming a model-based enterprise, which is phase, I think phase one or phase two of an eight-phase process of becoming a model-based enterprise. There's actually a phase list of that. Okay? So one of the things with model-based definition with 2019, you actually got a waterfall, and you didn't even know it. SOLIDWORKS is dim expert command. Everyone had that in core SOLIDWORKS, but it was only on parts. With 2019, the ability in 2018 for SOLIDWORKS MBD gave you the ability to do dim expert dimensions on assemblies for the whole assembly. So with 2019, we took the dim expert dimensions for assembly and put that in every seat of SOLIDWORKS, allowing you to not only have PMI data on parts, but you also have PMI data on 3D assemblies as well. So that's just a little waterfall that we got from 2019. So a couple things here with model-based definition we'll talk about. Here's a sheet metal part that's, that's coming off of a housing. You can see we got some components here. I'm going to open this one up. And the big thing here for sheet metal is the fact that now, with flat patterns, we can right click and say, insert a bend callout on the flat pattern. It automatically goes into the flat pattern feature and creates the callouts on those. And it automatically sizes those for best fit on the model. We can also insert bend tables now and have those change those up down radius values into callouts from the table. And this all will show up in your model base definition. So if we create a 3D view at the bottom, you'll now be able to switch between flat and folded at any given time, where in previous versions we'd have a small problem with that. Now we don't. That's been alleviated. Okay. So when you're manufacturing things, sometimes it's very important to make sure that you don't give away all the IP. Okay? So especially if you're a tier one supplier for the military, 31,000A mil spec requires that you deliver that technical data package as a 3D PDF file. Well, sometimes we don't want to give them everything. We don't want them to manufacture off of that 3D PDF. So new in 2019, the, once we pick a template for a 3D PDF, it shows us a preview of that, which we previously did not get. And we also have the ability to control if I can print, copy, or edit that PDF. So basically, if you've had those situations where you've gotten a PDF tax form, you filled it out and you try to give it to your, your significant other, and you couldn't because you couldn't save it, it's the same option here. Okay? 
You're at the mercy of the person who created it. So if I lock down that PDF, you can't do anything with it. If I open it up, sure, shooting, you can do something with it. So here, I can go in and put in a password. So every time you open that PDF, it's password protected, as you can see there. I can also put in a master password that is an override that gives me edit capabilities. So I probably recommend giving that one more than a two character password. So at that point, if we go into the securities on that, on that PDF, you'll see that I cannot copy, edit, or resave that document. Also, when you're doing model-based definition, sometimes machinists like to take your model and insert it into another part as a derived part. Okay? New in 2019 gives you the ability to pick what configuration is being used when you insert a derived part. It also brings over the PMI data. Why would a machinist want to do this? Because there's sometimes a machinist needs to move a feature for CAM purposes. Maybe it's undersized, oversized. It needs to go to the mid-range of the tolerance. You might need to be able to actually move that feature. Okay? Now, there is some stuff in Solish Cam 2019 that we can talk about to help negate that. So you can see, with MBD, we support bend tables, bend notes, and other things more specific on the PDF, we now can edit some of those, those privacy things that we don't people to get at. So I'm at 2 o'clock right now. You couldn't see Don Glasky. Where's Don Glasky at? He's probably right behind the light that I can't see. Yep, I can't see you, Don. You're right behind the light. Sorry, I actually have somebody tell me when it's 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock Central Time. It's definitely not 2 o'clock Eastern. So SOLIDWORKS CAM, we did some enhancements with milling and machining. And the reason why I mentioned Don Glasky is he's one of our technical experts for the tool. So if you're here at Brookfield Zoo, feel free to seek Don out afterwards. Once again, I'm Bob McGoy, five stars across the board. If you don't like what you see, 20 bustos, zero stars. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got in SOLIDWORKS CAM on the milling side of things. So for those of you who do not know this, every seat of SOLIDWORKS that's on maintenance, you have to be on maintenance. SOLIDWORKS CAM you get with every license of SOLIDWORKS. Okay? There's also two new licenses. Can I talk about that yet? The embargo's over? Okay, cool. With SOLIDWORKS 2019, there's actually two new um, types of SOLIDWORKS that you can get available for just machinists. There's SOLIDWORKS Machinist and SOLIDWORKS Machinist Professional. What it does is it gives you a version of SOLIDWORKS that's just parts and CAM. You can also get SOLIDWORKS Machinist Professional which is SOLIDWORKS parts assemblies in CAM. What that does is you don't get drawings, okay? Because if you're a machinist, you don't need that, okay? So, and they're relatively cost effective, so if you need that sort of thing, let us know, we can help you out with that, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this is an assembly with a setup for one of the components that's actually on the focuser for the camera. So if we look at this very quickly, you can see I've got a machining strategy all set up, but in this situation with 2019, I have full support for configurations of the assembly. What that allows me to do is have two different setups of the machine and have different machining strategies based upon what configuration I'm running, which makes life easier. I don't have to have two separate files. So you can see there, in that situation, I'm looking at step one. If I right click, I can go in and look at the other one here. Now, I need to do some machining on the side of this part. Now, as that tool comes down the side, you can see it's straight down. Well, I need to machine inside that area there where it's kind of recessed in. New with 2019, I can tell SOLIDWORKS CAM that I have a necked tool. So I give it the size of the cutting area, the size of the necking, the size of the shank, and the location of the tool holder and now I can get a more correct preview of what happens inside a cam based upon having the proper tool on the screen, 
where previously the simulation would show me shaving off half of that flange, which I don't want to do. And it's not going to happen because I'm actually using the right tool. Now, another thing that we can do inside of this is adjust speed at corners. Does anyone here do cam or have some buddies that do cam? We're mostly sawers people here, so I understand if you're not cam guys. But for those of you who have done cam before, have you ever broken a tool? Lucky son of a... Um, I've broken my share, and I haven't done cam very long. And part of the reason why I've broken tools is because I haven't adjusted the feed rate when things went to a corner. In previous versions, I'd have to go into post and edit the feed or speed or the chip rate as I got into the corner. By doing that, I reduced tool wear. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2019, as part of the machining strategy, I can tell it to reduce the feed and speed based upon a percentage or give it a fixed speed when it gets to a cornered area or a radius area. Here, I have situations where I might have multiple machines. Well, previous versions, if I grab a part and I want to do tooling on it, it's going to apply a machining strategy. It may not be the machining strategy that works for that machine. New with 2019, we give the ability to set up machines inside of the technical database. Once you set up those machines, then we can apply default machining strategies to those. Like in this situation, I've got a hole that's being drilled. And what I want to do there is adjust where the tool is actually starting to cut. Okay? Sometimes when we do tooling, we want to be able to assume that if I'm cutting into a plate, that the part has already had that, that area machined off and then cut a hole through it. What that means is the tool is going to go to the level of where that material should be and start cutting, which sometimes you can plunge into an area that you don't want to and break a tool. Now you can actually tell it an offset. This is what I was talking about with model-based definition with derived parts. This situation, somebody came in and said, well, based upon the tolerance of that part, I have to move that feature a little bit in one direction to make the machining work correctly based upon the min tolerance of the part because it's not an actual symmetric tolerance. There's quite a bit in milling in SOLIDWORKS 2019. Okay? So I think just spending some time and looking at what you've got, setting up your own technical databases based upon the machines that you have, and spending some time with our applications engineers for 2019, I think you're going to be happy with what some of the things you see. Turning. With turning, many times we're dealing with model-based definition. We're dealing with tight tolerance parts. Due in 2019, we have the ability to look at that MDD information and do tolerance-based machining based upon the tolerance you have on that 3D model. What's great about that is if I come in here, I can tell it to go ahead and generate the code and the machining strategies for that. If I come back in and I realize, wait a second, I actually need to undersize the groove on that. I can come in, edit the tolerance on it, go into my dim expert area, and initially it's a roughing and a finishing on both those, those two features. By telling it I need it to be undersized, by adjusting that tolerance, that means I'm going to have to do a different strategy. By changing the tolerance, SOLIDWORKS CAM will automatically change that to a roughing with two finishes instead of a roughing with a single finish. So these are all things that make life a lot easier. So like I said, becoming a model-based enterprise. Where do you go when you have problems? Where do you go when you want to leverage your intellectual property? You go to that model. Start thinking about ways model-based definition can help you out. So you can see there. The roughing pass is, turn, is turned from a roughing and finishing to a roughing and two finishes because it's an undersized tolerance now. Now, what does that mean time-wise to a machinist? A 
geometric tolerance change, a plus minus tolerance change doesn't mean anything to us because it's just a number. We just simply just go in and double click on it. But when you make tight tolerance changes or you change your, how you want that part to be modeled, that can mean hours and hours of work for a machinist. So being, having a tool like SOLIDWORKS CAM that sees that tolerance information and it updates your machining strategies on the fly saves you lots of time, lots of hours for your company. SOLIDWORKS inspection. There's quite a bit going on here. So when we look at SOLIDWORKS inspection for 2019, right off the bat, when we go into the, the setup for the report, we can now grab any custom property that we want from the SOLIDWORKS model or the SOLIDWORKS drawing. We can also go through a predefined list of possible properties that's in the inspection template and leverage those. Okay? So, for those of you who do inspection drawings or have somebody do inspection in your company, the typical way you do this is you print out the drawing. You hand it to somebody. They take a template. They circle the, the dimensions and they put numbers in there and they manually fill out the Excel spreadsheet. In this situation, I'm taking a SOLIDWORKS model, hitting a button and saying go. And it figures out every characteristic in the model, fills that out in a table, creates a PDF with the balloons, and also creates the Excel file so you can import that data in. I bring this up because there's some people in the room that have never seen inspection. It's a very nice tool. I consider it to be the highest return on investment of any of the SOLIDWORKS tools we have at the moment. There's more that are coming. But to me, saving hours and hours creating an inspection report is amazing here. So here, we have a, a hole that has a times two, it has the plus minus tolerances, has a call, call out information, and with a simple right click, we we're able to split out the key characteristics of that one call out into multiple characteristics, and then see them as an indented number. And that automatically fills out in an Excel spreadsheet, as you can see, 18.1 through 18.5. Also, when I started out, I went through and it automatically did the whole table for me in one shot. Previously, we couldn't do that. So, also, like I mentioned earlier, if you weren't on the, the stream earlier, it has full integration into SOLIDWORKS PDM. SOLIDWORKS Composer. I am going to try not to nerd out. Some of you know how much I love SOLIDWORKS Composer. Okay. So the people at the Canada, France, Hawaii Telescope Company spent a lot of time using Composer to show what they were going to do with the old telescope to their stakeholders. And they used Composer to do that. Okay. And they leveraged some of the new enhancements here. And I'm going to go through some of that. So SOLIDWORKS Composer 2019, they revamped some of the user interface, so it's, it's cleaner, it also supports 4K. My favorite, it just did there, was the command search. If you don't know what the command search is, please come see me. If you're watching on the stream and you do not know what the command search is, my email address is bobm at CATI. Yes, I'm saying it, bobm at CATI.com. I want you to know what that command is. I want SOLIDWORKS to teach you how to fish. Composer teaches you how to fish too with the command search. I might even put a blog article out on that. Look at blog.cati this week. We'll put it out there. So many times when people are working in Composer, they're creating these views. They're little snapshots of what the outputs are going to be. But sometimes you accidentally update a view that you didn't want to update. Well, now you can right click and say lock that view so no one can do anything with it. Also, custom views have a more descriptive thumbnail there. The search command allows you to go through and search for all actors. What I mean by an actor is some sort of entity inside of Composer. So a model is a geometry actor. A dimension is a collaborative actor. 
So here, we got a dimension that's 10 meters, and I did a search for linear, and it found the linear dimension for that collaborative actor. Balloons and arrows. Arrows, in a former life, I did technical illustrations. It was the bane of my existence, because someone always said, hey, can you rotate that model a little bit? That meant I had to go into Photoshop and redraw my balloons and my arrows. Here, inside of Composer, you now have the option to make sure that the arrows are always going to be consistent with your output. You can fix the size of the arrows. What you see here on screen is some of the animation capabilities in the animation library that's found in the Composer Workshops tool. So you can simply grab an actor, drag and drop, and it will automatically add um, scale and emphasize a certain component. And also between the gaps and on those animation library components, you can now right click and get context sensitive toolbars based upon those animations, where previously I'd have to hand keyframe all those things. The animation library has been in there for at least two versions, but some of that context sensitive toolbars have been in there, well, inside of SAR 2019 with Composer. So some pretty amazing stuff here. And I wish I could come in and tell you some of the other things that are coming, but right here, what we can do is we now create our own custom import. If you've used Composer before, when you go to go file open, there's all these checkboxes that you can create and check on and turn off and, and switch those options. And what you can do now is save that as your own standard so everyone else can import them the same way. So it's just another way to convey that information. If you haven't seen Composer or you want to check it out, once again, you're on the stream, email me, bobmcati.com. I'll be more than happy to show you Composer. I hope I have 400 emails in my inbox. Sour Electrical. I promise I'm not going to go too, in deep, too deep inside of some of the Sour ecosphere here. A couple things for the electrical guys. Dynamic connectors, we gave you the ability as you drag and drop a dynamic connector to pick what side the opening is going to be. If you've got pinouts on both sides, you can say, do I have a zigzag inside of that dynamic connector? Some great things there. The custom report creation tools here. In previous versions of SOLIDWORKS Electrical, you'd have to have yourself a SQL expert to help you out creating custom reports. Now with 2019, we give the ability to do those things much easier, and there's a really nice SQL reports wizard that helps you figure out how to get the reports that you want by leveraging the data that's inside your project or the data that's outside of your project with your customers' databases for their parts and information. Tighter integration with SOLIDWORKS routing. We're always focusing on the integration between electrical and routing to make this life a little bit easier. Now when we do a single line diagram for a wire harness inside of electrical, we can include splice points and um, connectors inside of that. Get a little water there. SOLIDWORKS PCB. We are always adding great information here. So the ability to have multi-contoured sketches for holes, copper traces, pads, polygons, those are all supported inside of SOLIDWORKS PCB. Silk screening solders and solder paste, you can now have that inside your 3D model. What that means for you is you have the ability to see copper traces now inside the 3D model. You can see them as a decal which SOLIDWORKS PCB will generate and put on the 3D model, or you can have a multi-layer PCB with all the traces inside there. I wish I had a screenshot of it. Actually, I think I do. Yeah, there we go. So this first one right here creates a sub-assembly for each one of the layers of the multi-layer PCB. So now we can see all the copper involved there and help you visualize how
how the traces are running through that assembly. Really nice. The accuracy of the material thickness has gotten even better because we're able to visualize and understand all those different layers of that multi-tracing. Okay. Solar simulation, real quick. We now have support on pin connectors in linear and nonlinear. To have a pin connector with more than three or four faces, we can now support up to 10 faces in one pin connector boundary constraint. So those, those are some great things there. Um, caseload manager, there's been some great performance increases with that. These are all things that we are going to cover a little bit more in some webcasts in November. If you're a sim person, feel free to, to give us an email. Um, we're going to get you some great information here pretty soon on some of that. Um, don't have a ton of time to do that today, but I'll, I'll get back to it. SOLIDWORKS Flow. They've added a ton in Flow in 2019. One of my favorites is looking at electrical enclosures and understanding how the heat builds up. Where am I having eddies? Where do I need to put fans in my enclosure to make my design more efficient and not have to use as much power for extra fans? How do I locate that fan in the most optimal location? With 2019, I can now see a heat flux plot. It allows me to see how the heat is visually with balloons being transferred from one component to another. I can see how much heat is being lost by the component due to radiation. I can also see how much heat is being lost by just transferring it to another component visually. I love this. This makes electrical component design for me as, a, as an ME much easier in 2019. This one's amazing. Being able to do surface parameters on a section cut. So what this means is we'll do this exhaust on this motor and we want to know what the, say like the, the volumetric force is at that one sectioning, okay? Well, we can now use a section plot and it will see every volume that it cuts across as separate representations. It will give me the values at each one of those cross sections. I think that's pretty amazing. Custom visualization, um, feature goals, okay. So when it comes to figuring out how to stop an analysis inside of um, SOLIDWORKS CFD, you have to give it a goal. You have to say, converge on this number. Once it hits that number, stop. Well, sometimes it's not as easy as one plus one. Sometimes it's log, sometimes it's cosine, sometimes it's secant. It's all these um, algebra, well, things that I don't want to have to do without a TI-85 or math lab, okay? Well, we have that embedded inside of the tool now. It makes it easier, okay? So you can use any algebraic functions, calculus functions you want there. Another thing inside of flow, when you create a boundary condition on a component, an, an entry or an exit, you can put a goal on that boundary condition and it's linked back to the original geometry which you previously couldn't do. You'd have to do that separately. SOLIDWORKS Plastics. A lot of this has to do with geometry in SOLIDWORKS Plastics. Previously, if we created a gate location, you just picked a point and you, sold, you told, told it what the gate size was going to be. Now you can physically model the gate and it picks up the gate size right from that piece of geometry. Okay. Sorry, my mouse double-clicked on me there. So the other things that we can do are controlled valves. Simulate a hot runner system. We can pick a couple faces and say at what point of what volume do I open that gate. We can also come in and do mesh controls on the physical model before we run the analysis. So if we have features that are historically problematic, we can go through select those faces, add a mesh control in SOLIDWORKS Plastics before we do the analysis and we don't have to worry about waiting for the analysis to complete before a mesh control is applied. So really nice. And on top of that, all that data is now saved into the SOLIDWORKS file. It's not an external file any longer. So I'm doing pretty good here. 
Got a few more minutes. Innovation. So, now, Andy, at the back, my director, I love you. I might go off script for a minute. I'm going to hook up my cheapo non-Wacom tablet and show you guys some stuff. If it's still connected, we'll cross our fingers and hope. Did I grab the broken USB cable? I did. Awesome. Hey, John Madden. Okay. So, so a couple things here I think you'll really enjoy. Solaris has added lots of things to be cutting edge and leverage cutting edge te technology. If we look here, multi-touch, you can see we got a Surface Studio wheel here. With 2019, we actually um, support the ability to put that wheel onto the, what we call the, the tabletop. And by holding down, it gives you pan, rotate, and zoom functionality. We can then pan, rotate, and zoom with that dial inside of SOLIDWORKS. It's a very amazing tool. And actually, oh, well, really cool. The other thing here is they asked for it when we added touch drawing in 2018. Why didn't you do splines? Well, we're doing splines now in 2019. I will try to show it to you here in a second. Hopefully no one will be too ticked off at me. Um, but now we can simply draw a shape and it will give me a spline. A couple other things that we can do is go through in slots. Does anybody do slots? I do lots of slots in my design. Simply just drawing an ellipse, put the slot on there, and then you can see you've got your slot. You can draw circles, rectangles, squares. One of my favorites is just writing the number down and it puts a dimension on. I think that's pretty cool. You do not have to have a three thousand Wacom, I mean a three thousand dollar Wacom screen in front of you. I have a thirty-five dollar touchpad. It works. Okay? Now that I've said that, it may not, but we'll try it here in a second. You know how Murphy's Law goes, especially with demos. But I like you guys. Another thing, with the touch sensitivity on touch screens, it was kind of intrusive with the commands previously. Now by just double clicking on a face in an assembly, you can then click on the next component and it adds a mate. If I put my finger down, it understands that I want to move the component and moves it for me. These are things that if you have Surface tablets, you have a Wacom Cintiq screen, you have um, some of the new Lenovo, some of the new Dells have a touchscreen as well. You're going to have full support for that in SOLIDWORKS 2019. So, it'd be hilarious if I brought up SOLIDWORKS and says activation count exceeded. No, we're not getting activation count exceeded. So, make sure I got my pin turned on here. Yep, okay. Oh, hold on. Forgot to say auto spline. Let's see if that takes. This is what I get here. So that fit an arc there. Let me show you a couple other things here real quick. I'll go back to the spline here in a second. But my favorite automatic slot, circle. That's actually more of a, there we go. If I put five next to it, automatically dimensions it. So that's with a $35 tablet that I found on Amazon. If you want to do some quick design things, you can just simply draw that out right in the number, and it picks it up. I mean, it really doesn't take that much. So, I'll spend some more time in that. I am no longer a use pin guy. I'm more of a use a mouse guy. So, that's just me. But we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. If anybody wants to see more of that, just let me know. 
So, so support for splines, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Handwriting, so it's using Google, I mean, not Google, but it's using Microsoft's Ink. So as long as you've got a tablet that can support um, digital ink inside of Windows, it'll work, it'll do that. This one's really nice. I'll just go ahead and show it here. Many times someone will say, you know, that's really nice. I want to do some markups on that. Give me a screenshot of that. So now 2019, you can come in and create 3D markups and draw on them inside of SOLIDWORKS and save that as a markup in the tree. Now, by default in 2019, it's a feature manager folder that's hidden by default. So if you go into, um, what is it, system options, under feature manager, you can go to markups and say show, and you'll be able to right click and add a markup at any given time. Simply use your finger, or if you've got a pen tablet there, you can go ahead and draw that on there, and that will appear in the SOLIDWORKS model. You can then save that as a 3D markup, so it can become part of your model-based definition file, or it can be just in your markup folder there. So, pretty amazing stuff. What do you guys think? Pretty cool? It can also be exported as a PDF or just saved as a PNG file. SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Like I said, I'm trying not to geek out with this one because this is one of my favorites. Um, some salespeople don't even want me to show it because I will take up two hours just to show Visualize. But with SOLIDWORKS Visualize, in Service Pack 3, we enabled a tool called AI Denoiser. This is a tool from NVIDIA. And what it does is it looks at the surfaces that you're rendering and says, you know, I know what that surface is going to be. All that digital noise, that little pixeling that you see on screen, just goes away after 10, 10 parses. 10 passes, and it goes away. It will continue to refine, which is really nice. Real-time physics, as you can see, there's some plates there. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this. I'm thinking about dropping some stuff in a rock hopper and see what happens. But it allows me to do jitters. I can do drop test. I mean, drops for, for physical dynamics inside of Visualize. So if I have something and I want to drop it and see how it goes into a hopper, I can simulate that, which is pretty cool. You can probably think to yourself, why is that MacBook Pro sitting there? Well. Pretty straightforward. Video decals. So in 2019, we added support for a couple different types of materials. One of those is video-based materials. So that could be some pretty nice things that you're going to do for marketing. Okay? There's also two material types that we added. One is NVIDIA's MDL libraries. They are a coded library. They actually are a programming language. Um, they are based upon algorithms. Then there's a PBR, not Paps Blue Ribbon. Um, thank you for the chuckles. So it's PBR, and what it's based upon are texture maps. Um, a great, great tool would be, um, oh, Mike Sandy, do you remember what, what the name of that company is? Algorithmic. Yes, thank you, Mike Sandy um, from SOLIDWORKS. Um, basically, they have databases of materials that you can download, and they're based upon real-world texture maps, and they're perfectly tileable. What this does, by having those two types of materials that you can drag and drop into Visualize, is you give yourself the ability to have consistency with the engineering group, the marketing group, and if your company has a high-end group that's doing high-end renderings, they're using these types of materials. So we have further usage of those materials throughout the company. This is one I've been testing for a long time. Unfortunately, my HDMI cable is being used at the moment. So later after this presentation, come see me, and I will load this guy up. This is an augmented reality headset from a company called MetaVision. 
basically what this does, it allows me to take virtual reality information and be able to see the room, but also be able to interact with a SOLIDWORKS 3D model. Okay? Now, previously, if I wanted to do this, the workaround for me was to open up my SOLIDWORKS model, then take it into Visualize, because Visualize had a FBX converter, and the FBX converter could be opened in a tool called Unity, or Unreal Engine. If anybody ever plays video games, you probably heard of one of those two things. Those are the backbone for virtual reality creation. So that was kind of a workaround. Now with SOLIDWORKS 2019, we give you the ability to go file, thank you, I've got 10 minutes, to go file, save as, and it will save an XR file or a GLTF. What you can do with that is you can open it directly inside of the MetaVision headset, you can open that directly inside of other tools. You can open it inside of um, Unity or Unreal Engine and generate content. Okay. The other thing you saw there was eDrawings Direct VR. If any of you have an HTC Vibe or some sort of virtual reality headset, instead of having to go out and find a platform to view your information, you can now use eDrawings to deliver a VR experience, okay? All you have to do is open the model and say open VR. As long as your headset is connected and functioning correctly, it will activate that VR experience inside of your headset using eDrawings as the backbone. Actually, let's see here. So one of the developers, let's see if this will actually come up, come up here. There we go. So if I go file open VR, I just have to pick the SOLIDWORKS file, put on your alien headgear, and you are inside of your model with the HCC Vive inside of eDrawings. How is this possible? It's due to that performance increase that you get with that new performance pipeline in 2019. So if you've got a Kepler card, a Maxwell card, a Pascal card, if you're fortunate enough to have the Volta or the Turing, you're able to leverage this inside of eDrawings. Now this is eDrawings for Windows only right now, but I wouldn't be surprised if you couldn't do it later in the future on Mac. But it gives you the ability to teleport. It also gives you the ability to grab components and move them out of the way. So if I go File, Save As, it's literally save as extended reality file, XR. Now, that was a screenshot from MetaVision there, that what you can see. If you get some time, come see me. I'll be at the booth with this setup. Hopefully, I've got some enough power here. So that's an explode view of the, the whole session here. So innovations. It's amazing some of the things we've come out with.
So like I mentioned, performance, attention to detail, the 3D platform, as I call it, inside of SOLIDWORKS, and bringing out new products, something that you may not have expected, but you're going to leverage in the future. These are all things that we've done in 2019. So I can't wait to see what this, this satellite's going to look like. When, I mean, not satellite, but the telescope when it's done. It's going to be some amazing pictures. And I can't wait to see what you guys do with 2019 in SOLIDWORKS. Um, one thing I want everyone to be aware of here, I'm going to show my desktop here for a second. So we're all on the same page. With SP0 to get the performance pipeline to work, this is how it goes. If I go to options inside of SOLIDWORKS and I go to performance, there is a check mark down here at the very bottom that says enhance graphics performance. That has to be checked on. Now currently we're working with NVIDIA to change one thing to make this a little bit easier. But it, when you go into the NVIDIA control panel, you're going to go into manage 3D settings and you're going to go all the way down to the bottom and you're going to look for dynamic streaming. That allows that data from SOLIDWORKS to flow directly on the GPU and work correctly. In the future, we're going to work with NVIDIA to make sure that that just works right out the gate and we don't have to do that. But those are the two things that you have to do with SOLIDWORKS 2019 to make that pipeline work so you've got the increased performance. So, first of all, you have to figure out what your video card is. So, you'd have to go into the device manager of your computer, and you'd go under display adapters and find out what it is. And what we need is an NVIDIA K, so the, the number is superseded by the model version. So, you're going to have like a K3000 or an M3000 or a P3000. If it says, I have a Quadro 4000, that's an older card. That's a Fer I believe that's a Fermi card, isn't it? So Fermi and back are not supported. So from what we found, the top 10, I mean, out of the top 10 cards, 80% of those cards are supported throughout our SOLIDWORKS users, users. So only a small percentage of them are not supported in that pipeline. So if, if you bought a computer within the last six years, you should be in pretty good shape if you bought a Quadro card. So, other questions? All right, questions are actually for the end. I'm sorry. Sorry, Tony. I like questions. I like answers. <laughs> All right. So Bob McGoy, ladies and gentlemen, um, there are two words that I like to use to describe Bob McGoy, uh, never and always. Um, Bob never likes to follow the script, but he is always bringing us new and exciting uh, compelling content, and today was no different. Uh, Bob, uh, great job today. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Great job.